today we're going to be looking at how to make a mini bong bag. This is something I just can make really quick and simple. Don't put a lot into it, but you can put as much as you want to into it. So first here I'm going to cut it with the jaws. I like to keep the blade facing up and snap away from my body. Now I've got two sharp edges here that I need to flame polish because uh, once you cut your lip on one of these sharp tubes, you never really want to again. So we're going to go ahead and uh, flame polish them first, let them cool down, and then start working. In order to flame polish, I like to wave it into the flame a little bit to get it heated so it doesn't shock and crack or do anything weird to me once I stick it in for fully melting. And do the same on the other side, because why not? another tube just to have some prep ready and then we're gonna have a little bit of movie magic where I had to wait to, for these to cool down but you guys aren't gonna have to wait warm up the side that I'm going to be working. I'm going to grab a punty and I'm going to use it to close this hole. Get a nice round bottom by heating it up evenly and then pulling it out of the flame, puffing it a little bit. If you start with something that's a little off center, then everything's going to be off center down the line. So you really want to try to get everything as good as you can. I'm going to go ahead and do a full seal on the end for my punty. Now you could do a cold seal, but you'll see that I push a Maria for the lip part. And uh, there's times where I've been shaping the Maria and had the cold seal crack off. That's really undesirable. So I just go ahead and do a full seal because it doesn't take much time to melt off. And I've got to pop a hole right there anyway later. So you're going to see I'm going to go in a little bit further than I normally would on a chillum and start to condense down that choke point, just heating it up very slowly, not really pushing too much, but when it wants to sink in on itself, I allow it to, I give it that room so it starts to build up on itself rather than get smaller diameter. Kind of like to leave a little bit of bubble here. Sometimes I, I'll do it like where it's flush, but if a little bit of bubble isn't going to hurt anything, especially for what you got to do later on down the line. I'm going to roll it on my L marker to make sure it's straight. Then I'm going to go down. If you look on the left and bottom side of my bench here, I've got little marks that I have measurements already set up so I can, in the heat of the moment, go and measure something out. I got a point that I stuck to with my eye. I bring it back to the flame. I know how long it's going to be now, and I'll go for this Maria. Now, when I'm doing the Maria, it's kind of like doing a choke point, but I push it way more aggressively, and you'll start to see it like build up around itself, almost like a solid ring. I'm going to go straight from the flame to the top of the L marker, and I'm going to square it off. It's going to be like a flat Maria right there. In my opinion, it looks a little bit cleaner. You could just do it around Maria too, whatever you're comfortable with at first. Now that that Maria is done, I'm going to go ahead and take off my punty because there's nothing more I need to do with it. I'm going to use that same punty though. Oh, no, maybe not. Yeah, I didn't need to put it down there, but I did. Oh, well. And I'm going to rip open the hole there, just kind of twist in two opposite directions while evenly heating, pulling back that membrane until it pops open. <coughs> Then I'm sitting here kind of warming it up a little bit, reaming it, trying to match that wall thickness so it's as even as I can get it. I'm going to use the paddle and the L marver to make sure it's uh, straight. Maybe one more time. And now I'm going to go in for this bottom foot. Now, 
the idea is to heat up the same amount. Don't go go uh, moving the flame back towards your choke point once you've started heating and doing this motion here where you're flaring it. It's like a flare, but way more aggressive. You're doing a hard angle there. I've picked a spot with the tip of my reamer and I've kind of kept it in that general location as I'm spinning, slowly cranking it more and more. If you start to heat backwards or you, you're not heating the same exact part, then um, you're gonna crawl up the tube and it's gonna get wonky. It's not gonna be straight. I used the uh, pad for a second there to make sure it was straight though. Now as I'm getting the next part ready, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reheat that mouthpiece a little bit, that Maria, that way when I go to cut it off later, it's not gonna crack on me. I like to do these type of pieces all in one go. There's no reason to be garaging it, putting it in the kiln, any of that. You can work it, keep it hot enough to where you don't need to do that. It's a big time saver. Now that I've got it reheated, I'm uh, about to basically do a dot here. Now, you're gonna see I'm build, I'll am i build off the dot a few times. I'll dot on, directly on top of the dot, and I find it's easier to do that than it is to like make a pill or a pillar shape and try to attach it that way. It's a little bit more controllable this way. So I've added the one dot, reheating that mouthpiece as I prepare the second dot. Put it right on top of that first dot again. Heat that up and slowly building that length out. It's gonna look like a little pillar hanging off the side there. This piece is, uh, this part of the piece is purely decorative to give the appearance of like a slide coming out. Go ahead and do that last dot, melt that in. I'm gonna keep my punty close because I'm gonna grab it once I heat this up, almost like you're pulling a horn and yank it down. And there I'm showing you the pillar shape. It's kind of just hanging off the edge there. Now that I've got the mass where I want it without warping anything, I'm gonna go ahead and shape that mass to the desired shape. So I heated it up there. I grabbed it and then I let it get a skin on there and cool for a second. And then I'm yanking it down and slowly kind of drifting it to the spot that I want it to be. And you'll see it's basically just like pulling a horn off there, but that's just the first move for this shape. Now I've got the horn shape. I'm going to start heating up the tip and I'm going to grab my uh, tungsten pick and I'm going to push right in the center of that glob. And it starts to push it down and create this little, it almost looks like a bowl. Can, uh, mess around with it a little bit, manipulate it, get it to the shape or position that you want to. I don't recommend doing it too much though because there is such a thing as overworking these to where they'll start to warp. It's just really thin glass. There's not a lot to it. So the more heat you put in one place, uh, the more you're going to have troubles. Flatten it out and make sure it's kind of squared off there. Now I'm gonna go in and add a tinier dot, and this is gonna be like the handle off of the slide. Reheat that mouthpiece, make sure it's staying warm so this don't crack on me. Because about this point, like these type of things, there's no point in even trying to fix if it cracks. You just move on to the next one and count it as a loss. Add a second little dot, kind of pull a tinier horn there make sure that's melted in nice and good and kind of like before grab it with another piece of glass and just pull it just a little bit almost like pulling a little horn off the bowl that you've sculpted and uh, I'm gonna try to get the camera to focus here 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's the general shape right there. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. People get what it's supposed to look like. Now, like I said in the beginning, you could put as much time or as little time into these as you want. You could sit there and really sculpt it out and make it look way nicer. You could make it look like a fake glass on glass joint. There's all sorts of options there. Also in the past, I've been known to sandblast images into these two. Make like a fake roar maybe or something, a, a rar, like whatever. You just sandblast the whole thing. You could also uh, put like a little fake ice pinch in there to really drive home the idea. Now that I've uh, pretty much caught this one done, I'm going to rip that blow tube off of the mouthpiece there. I'm going to leave a little bit of a lip and that's okay because it gives you somewhere to put your lips. Make sure it's nice and rounded out even, thicken it up a little bit. Give it a little flatten there on the Elm Arbor. And yeah, that's basically it. So there it is, uh, pretty quick, pretty simple, doesn't take too much. You can do this with just a tube and a rod, you don't need anything fancy or special and this is what I used to do before I could blow uh, rigs and bombs and stuff like that as I would uh, make fake ones. <laughs> Too. The whole size is kind of important. If it's too big, they're going to be eating stuff. If it's too small, it's going to clog up really nice. So I'm going to do it one more time off the remainder of that first tube that I just used, and uh, you guys can see all the moves in sequential order one more time.
mouthpiece Maria that I placed is uh, a little close to the end of the tube there. I'm not going to get a really good solid spin to be able to do this foot piece. So in a, in a hurry, I just grabbed up my claw grabbers and threw it on there. It was a little wonky, but it still got the job done.
so that's going to do it for this one. Uh, be sure to leave a comment. Let me know if this helped you out any. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.